Hi, this is Dr. Centeno, and today I'd like to talk about what's up with Regenix and the FDA. I get a lot of questions about this, so I thought it would be a good idea to put something on the internet saying this is the status of all of that. So there have always been two tracks for new therapy discovery. We have the much slower pharma track and the much quicker physician discovery track. And the benefits of pharma companies discovering new drugs are they can produce very high quality data showing those drugs work. Physicians tend to start more with observations, then go to case series, then to go to comparison trials, then finally randomized controlled trials. So the data takes longer to work up. The downside though of the pharma discovery system, it's, it's, a, it's a huge aircraft carrier that isn't very efficient. Whereas, Physician discovery is often a speedboat. When physicians discover new ways to do things or treat patients, they do it because they see problems that need to be solved. And obviously there are many examples of pharma drugs that have been approved, just like there are many examples of things like open heart surgery, most modern orthopedic surgery, in vitro fertilization, that wasn't invented by pharma companies, it was invented by doctors. The Regenix procedures have always been just orthopedics and bone marrow and different types of platelet mixes are used either to isolate cells in the lab and culture them for two weeks, which is the Regenix cultured or C procedure, or inject those cells the same day, which is the Regenix SD or same day procedure. The FDA claimed that the cultured procedure was a drug and which led to a, uh, a disagreement with them over whether that was the case. And the same day procedure has always been performed and is still being performed. And, and that's never stopped because there was no claim that that was a drug. Now our procedure history goes way back. Uh, we started doing all this in 2005 with an IRB approved study. Uh, we published some uh, imaging proof of concept reports, and during that time, we weren't charging patients, that was just research. Then once we saw that this worked, we, uh, by mid-2010, had done more than a thousand procedures. Uh, since that time, in the last four years, we've done many more thousands of procedures. We've published big safety papers and other uh, research. And if you want to know about our Regenix research, just go to Regenix.com and see our website. The regulatory dispute or why we chose to fight City Hall. So FDA claimed that the cultured procedure, not the same day procedure, was a drug and that we were producing a new drug. Now, they claim that we were producing an adulterated biologic product by taking the patient's own stem cells, culturing them to get bigger numbers of those cells, and that we weren't following drug mass manufacturing standards a la CGMP, uh, i.e. that our medical practice didn't look like a Pfizer drug factory. So let's look at that issue. Um, we were a medical practice culturing our own cells for our own use, not a drug factory. There was never any evidence that we produced any adulterated or contaminated cells at all. We had multiple safety audits showing that we were doing a good job of, of keeping cells sterile, etc. And we've published lots of safety data on the culture procedure, including an independent research study not published by us, showing that the procedure was safer than FDA approved medications. So if there were no safety issues, what was the issue? Why was FDA uh, concerned? Well, the 800 pound gorilla was really how to classify your cells and whether or not those cells should be body parts or drugs. So we felt that drugs were mass distributed things and that obviously you needed to have drugs manufactured by big companies because a bad batch can make lots of people sick. 
but that a surgical procedure was a one-on-one -on -one in interaction between a doctor and a patient, and the patient chose to go forward once the patient understood the risks and the benefits. And we didn't think it made much sense to turn the patient's own cells into a drug, and we weren't alone. In fact, when all of this was proposed in the late 1990s, the American Red Cross, the Society for Reproductive Technology, which is uh, the folks that uh, are the uh, group that controls in vitro fertilization in this country, uh, Northwestern University, the American Society of Clinical Oncology, and the Biotechnology Industry Organization all opposed this concept that cultured cells were drugs. In addition, during our fight for patient rights, uh, when we got involved in questioning FDA's authority over your cells as drugs, lots of important people chimed in in support. In fact, two former FDA commissioners took our side of the argument, stating that they didn't think that FDA was wise in regulating a small medical practice that was culturing cells like Pfizer. Marianne Churba, a Boston College legal scholar, also felt that FDA's policy needed significant revision. The Manhattan Institute, uh, which is a public policy institute, took our side, as well as Richard Epstein from NYU Law School. Now, ultimately, the DC agree circuit agreed with FDA's position that cultured stem cells were drugs. The ruling was a bit different in that it focused on a combination of cells with an antibiotic called doxycycline that we use to reduce bacterial contamination. It's unsure why the ruling focused there, but that was the focus of the ruling. But we accepted the ruling. Uh, we accepted their authority that they had made a decision. And did this really impact Regenix? The answer was no. The ruling had no bearing on the same day procedures that we perform in the US, and we hadn't performed the culture procedure since 2010, which was the first time the FDA took the official position that we were creating a new drug. So that's pretty much it. That's the, that's the story behind FDA and Regenix. It doesn't affect much. It was an important decision. It was an important fight for patient rights. At the end of the day, the uh, FDA uh, won that case in court that your stem cells, when they're cultured, can be drugs. And we fully accept that position and have just moved forward with the same day procedures that they allow here in the United States. If you want to know more, uh, here's the link to try to find out more about this because there's been lots and lots of people who have written about this issue. Thanks so much for watching.